Hello, everybody. Welcome to Build Review. Today, we're reviewing the Morbius build submitted by Axelit for Hardcore League. It's important to note, Morbius made it all the way through Hardcore League, 1 to 20, um, largely solo, was one of the first characters in Epics, and also got all the way up to the level cap and then died. Um, but that's not important. So this is a Razor Claw Shifter build. It's a Wizard Barbarian um, using the claws, like Morbius from the uh, critically acclaimed film Morbius. Um, so if you haven't seen it yet, keep that in mind. There's no notes here, but this is a uh, hand wrap using attacker. So we're going to take a look at what was done with Morbius and see what we can change. So obviously, you need to be a Razor Claw Shifter because you attack with your claws. That's really important. Um, this character also needs to have a bunch of dexterity so you can take the two weapon fighting feet line. So that makes total sense. It's also a strength based build with constitution and intelligence because I guess because of the raging. Um, and I guess you don't cast spells while raging. So this is going to be an interesting, an interesting problem. I'm curious to see how you kind of workshopped your way around this one because to get a good sense of it this build was also done before swords to plowshares so it's possible that you could fit that in you also grabbed dodge mobility and spring attack i wonder how much you need spring attack in favor of whirlwind attack which would be massive for this character so i feel like dodge mobility and whirlwind attack would be a lot better on this build for like the free cleave which would be kind of cool so that's probably where i would recommend going um, you're also going to need to fit in some other feats as well. Um, I think a lot of the two-weapon fighting feat line is going to be at shoved off until later, like into epics and stuff. Because I think whirlwind attack is kind of good on a character like this, since you're applying extra damage from your melee hits. You're going to be applying the Eldritch Knight damage and whatever your undead damage is as well. Um, so that's kind of good. And you pick the extra elemental dice, so that makes sense. So, I think how we would change this... It's probably just leave the two weapon fighting feats for a while. Um, my chat is off. Oh, from the time we talked about politics. Oh yeah, I forgot about that combo chat. There we go. You're visible now. Um, so we do this. So we're going to swap this out for whirlwind attack. Update 56 whirlwind attack. Um, and then swap in swords to plowshares here. I think these effects are actually more powerful. Actually, do you need the crit? Probably not. You're probably just scaling all the other stats. So I would probably do the two weapon fighting here. Then hit them with swords to plowshares as opposed to spring attack. Because this gives critical threat range to hand wraps. And then you need to take the other two feats. So you would grab here. Um, because the critical damage is not going to be as impactful as just the extra hits. So greater two weapon fighting. And then finally you grab the... Um, improved critical. It does help and it is important and it is good. But obviously it, you know... You're going to be adding a lot of base damage from other areas. I don't have improved critical showing. That's why I can't see it. Uh, should we just do this? Like so. I feel like that's a little bit better organization in general. Um, mm -mm -mm. So you have maximize, quicken, extend, and empower. You also take mental toughness, which is pretty good. You also take quicken. I wonder if you can fit some of these feats in a little sooner by taking dodge at three and mobility at six. You get whirlwind attack before 12. Because I don't know how much you need mental toughness at all. I feel like your mana will be fine. I also don't know if you need empower at all. Or maximize. What are you even maximizing? Until you get to epics. You can't cast spells because you're raging to attack stuff. So I think that's probably how we change this. So I'm going to keep uh, changing things around. Trying to find the right optimal feat balance. Um, Like quick in here. Extend sounds good. Move mobility up. So you get these abilities sooner. And you can move whirlwind attack up. And Whirlwind Attack is a massive boost in damage for the early game. Um, so that's good. Then you can remove the Im improved two-weapon fighting. Yeah, because the Carrion Swarm and other stuff is great. And I think you should keep that. But I'm just saying, for the leveling process, you don't need those feats, right? Um, which means then you can take a lot of the stuff sooner. So you can take Improved Critical here instead. Which saves you a feat earlier. You can replace Mental Toughness with Maximize, because again, you only need that for Epics, you don't need that for Heroics. Uh, which leaves you an Epic Beat option, open. 
Um, if you want to press buttons, Wellspring of Power is very good for this type of character. You can Wellspring of Power before putting on your Death Aura, because you're now dead. You can Wellspring of Power before casting your damage over time spells. So these are also good options. Arcane Warriors, an obvious choice here. Um, yeah. Or you could grab Intensify for your spell-like abilities. Honestly, all are good options. I would probably take Wellspring. If I'm being honest. I like Wellspring. I like Double Strike. Epic DR is fine. Arcane Warrior is fine. Enhanced Elemental Dice is fine. It's, it's fine. I'm worried about dying. Because you have a reasonable amount of health, but I'm still worried about dying. Intensify is probably better. Well, maybe. It depends. I think this entirely depends on how much you uh, press Wellspring. I think Wellspring is better than Intensify. Um, because, I mean, you have some spell-like abilities, but yeah. And these, this feat down here isn't going to save you or do anything for you. Like, you're taking you're taking both of them. I think they're both useful. I think it depends on your practice with Wellspring of Power, but I'd probably use Wellspring of Power. This character is like a weird hybrid of melee that does a bunch of stuff. Sign of the Plane of Earth also seems like it's the right call because you're doing acid damage over time with your attacks and the elemental dice. Um, so you can do a lot of extra damage because on applied on hit damage is really important for this type of character. And Whirlwind Attack is very, very strong. If you haven't tried Whirlwind Attack, by the way, it feels super good. It's way smoother. Um, okay. So what are we doing here? So you have all the big rage stuff, which makes sense. You're also grabbing all the good stuff out of Eldritch Knight. So this is all self-explanatory. Um, Undag Augmentation uh, apparently didn't pick it. So whatever you picked is bugged out. Um, you got plus three for one strength, dex, and con. Okay. Um, and you have Frenzy Berserker for blood tribute, which I like, and Ravager for the extra points here. So I actually don't mind that. You suddenly be centered for a win? Nope, you don't at all. Uh, you don't take Magic Fang, which I find astonishing, because this is plus um, seven or eight to hit in damage. So I would definitely take Magic Fang here, for sure. Um, over, like, even 10 negative amp is useful. I would definitely take that, for sure. Um, if you were to take a point out somewhere, I guess you could take a point out of Hardy Shifting if you want. Can't use Magic Fang in a dead form. Oh, because you're undead. Hilarious. Oh, that's such a problem. I didn't even think about that. Oh, man, that sucks. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm learning something new. I really like Arcane Siphon because it's just a good attack, but obviously the, the health is pretty nice. I don't really have any problem with anything else here. Uh, spell casting in medium armor is good because you are going to be wanting to wear medium armor on this character. The strength is weird because you do get strength out of Eldritch Knight, which is just a weird concept. Radiant Force Field is powerful, but you do get Arcane Barrier, which is similar to Radiant Force Field on a 90 second cooldown. I would say it can be useful to use, but it's tough to say. Um, and then, of course, the Shroud here, you're going to be picking up the... Either Incorporeal Mischance, which gives you higher uh, defense, or alternatively, you're taking Inflict Wariness. Inflict Wariness is nice because it says Vorpal Melee hits and Inflict a negative level. It does not. It's just, um, it's just critical hits. Another option is just 25 hit points and 5 PRR, also good. Magic resistance rating, also good. Um, you can't go wrong with any of this, basically. Any of the defensives, so these these three here, the first three, um, or uh, Incorporeal Mischance. Alternatively, you can also take the You No Longer Take Extra Damage from Light, which as a vampire is so super duper duper essential. So, you know, the yeah, Cold Absorb is also pretty good. It's an option. Um, but I don't see anything wrong here. Corpse Cracker, three points for plus one strength, dex, and cons. Not the worst. Um, but I definitely wouldn't put three points in the Skeleton Knight. I'd probably just take the health instead. So I'd probably do something along the lines of, like... Uh, oh, yeah, whoops. Like, one point in Skeleton Knight, and then three points in Corpse Crafter, and then this. Which leaves you with one point left over. So you can still take that negative amp. I just don't think the extra skeleton power is useful at all, even given the extra strength. It's just you're not you're never going to use this, and the extra ten health is going to be more valuable in general. Um, Cloak of Night you would never use. Yeah, it seems fine. Uh, Frenzy Berserker picking up strength into Blood Tribute. Hardcore League just regular gameplay. Blood Tribute's amazing. In Epics this grants 400 temp HP, um, so good. Does this scale with legendary levels? If you're 32, do you get even more temp HP? I actually don't know that. Uh, you're only two barbarians, you can't do any more. And then extra con while raging is nice, because you get six extra con. Plus, your character has extra rages, so you get one, two, three, and then extra rages here. Um, so rage currently gives your character plus 
Um, you you have to shift here. You can't rage. So you have to get yeah plus six con, and then the extra plus two strength while raging is not too bad. And of course you take this stuff, so this seems pretty good. I wouldn't change this. I also wouldn't change up the build. Um, Subtle Force 2 is extremely powerful for your build because of the extra hit chance. Remember, the benefit of hand wraps is they get more attacks than the regular than a regular character would. Um, so you're going to be getting more hits more often, which is useful. So I, that's how I would change that. The rest of this, I mean, Arcane Siphon versus the hit points. Arcane Siphon if you're on um, like Softcore, so you're playing on Argon Essen, Arcane Siphon. Playing on Hardcore, Toughness. So pretty pretty straightforward uh, call here. Um, Epic Destinies. You went Fury of the Wild, which now with Whirlwind Attack is so much better than before, because now it has the the knockdowns, which is kind of sick. Um, Primal Avatar, you grabbed all the stuff here. You grabbed Body. You did take Thorn for the extra damage, but you didn't take Evergreen, which is interesting. You have the Cast While Raging. You have the Eldritch Knight Toggle, which is pretty good. Um, and then you have Fury of the Wild here for trip DCs. What do you need trip DCs for? It does give you six. I guess for Be the Whirlwind, because it gives you extra trip DCs. I don't know exactly how this works. Eldritch Tempest doesn't have a... doesn't have. It's not a trip. It just always works. It's just a knockdown. Offhand strike chance is obviously good. This brings you up. This is probably the best one here. And then double strike 6% is really, really good. Um, I mean, saves versus traps is not that bad. I guess, yeah, you wouldn't take the mantle if you just have to move up. I can see that. Um, Gives you barbarian rage. You already have. Shaken or feared enemies. You don't shaken or fear enemies. Fear of the wild. Boulder's might only uses two-handed fighting, which is really annoying. And fast and furious allows you to da dash to people, which could be useful on Morbius. I don't know. Um, Gird Against Demons gives you Cold Iron, which again has some value in it. It's interesting with Fury of the Wild, you basically just take Nature's Fury here. I do like Scarred by Chaos, because it's 50 health and 10 PRR for 2 points. Unbridled Fury is also really nice. Um, but yeah, Lore of the Wild's not too helpful. This is 1% uh, max hit points. And then Great Leveler. I don't know what the animation looks like, but honestly, I don't like this ability. I've never seen it do that well. The problem is it's just really awkward. It it stops you from you can't cast it while moving, so your character has to like physically stop, and um, it just it's just clunky, and it misses all the time. So I don't like it. Yeah, outside of Fury of the Wild, what else would you do? The benefit of Fury is it gives you extra strength while raging, which you obviously want. Plus, you get the primal force. I guess it's weird when you don't take adrenaline, huh? Because you're using Garion Swarm for the extra damage, which is which is honestly a good smart decision. You're just kind of using this for some of the extra tankiness. I just feel like I wish this was tankier. Um, like I just wish you had more hit points. Because even still, with all your defensive stats, 2600 is not that bad for Hardcore League, honestly. Because yeah, you do get all the health from Eldritch Knight. You get all the health from Fear of the Wild. All right, you do get a good amount of health. That's actually not too bad. Although this is factoring in Blood Feast temp HP, which it should not be doing. Uh, yeah, and this heal, by the way, is amazing um, whenever you cast this. Now, granted, you're an undead, so it's not as good. But still. Um, you probably don't need Embrace the Pain. And Fort Bypass is not that bad. This is a terrible ability. But you've already spent everything everywhere else. It's really weird when you don't take the Mantle, the Mantle Effects, or the um, Epic Strike. And took Barrier from Draconic. Yeah, the Nature's Fury is nice, but um, dropping Elemental Blood, which is a lot of temporary hit points, so um, if you cast like a Poison spell, so basically sometimes Carrion Swarm, you get Scales of the Dragon. This effect is really, really, really good. I mean, you could also drop one point out of body and put it back in here, so you have both the Elemental Blood temp HP, the Shardstorm temp HP, and the Scales of the Dragon temp HP, which is honestly probably better. Because the plus one critical multi on a 19 or 20 is great. It's powerful. It's useful. Um, but on Hardcore League, is this extra damage going to save your life? Probably not as much as this. Um, so yeah, like this, this goes off all the time. Yeah, the other option is possibly to go with Magus of the Eclipse, which I actually think is not the worst. 
um, as opposed to Fury of the Wild, but it really changes up. It, your damage is going to be way lower. You don't take the spell-like abilities, obviously, so you're just going to have like the anti-magic stuff, and you don't have enough points for Tier 5. I'd say if you weren't going Primal Avatar, I'd swap it over, but I think Primal is like, too good. Also, this ability is not good. The Moonlight effect where you draw the circle, honestly not very good. Uh, I've tried to use it and incorporate it. Even on my character that's at cap right now, I try to use it. The freeze almost never goes off. The damage is super low. It's nice as like a little bit of a buff for melee, but outside of that, it's not super useful. It's only good if you have like procs or anything else like that. And this character is basically just gonna be casting Primal, Primal Avatar spells, Carrion Swarm, Shard Storm, and then meleeing people. Um, and since you have all the poison spell or acid spell power here, acid spell power here, the extra acid spell power, um, in other places, your acid spell power is acid. Yeah, like 540, which is pretty good with, like, without your spell-like ability. So that's just on your melee attacks, which is pretty sweet. Um, yeah, overall, I would just change the feats up a little bit to move things around to get whirlwind attacks sooner. Because, again, you don't need maximized power until epics. Like, you're not maximizing power or anything. You're going to be attacking people. With the exception of, like, um, negative energy burst for healing, Maybe. But even then, you're still like rarely casting because it depends on when you're, where your rage is coming from. Um, you're, it's a lot of like passive healing instead. You have a lot of health as well. Um, part of the family, two piece, two piece. Honestly, not that bad. Two piece summer, two piece winter for the resistance is great when you don't have access to like raid items. Love the blood bark bracers with the raging strength, the speed, the double strike. Charun is obviously a better choice here, but in an optimized build. This gives you the double strike and insightful double strike. Uh, the only other crazier item would be, as opposed to these acolyte lenses, you got the, um... oh, I don't know if they're in here, the new items from uh, Temple of Elemental Evil. I don't think they are, but the new temple goggles that give you um, deadly, quality, deadly, double strike, insightful double strike. That would be the only item I would probably replace here because you already have deadly, but the other stats are really useful. Everything else looks pretty good. Um... Yeah, overall, I like the Morbius build. I wouldn't really change the level path because I do like the fact that you get the 18, as I said. Um, your spells, I mean, we didn't fill in the spells here, but, you know, Whale because it's free. Um, Rend the Soul because it just does free damage. Again, we're just picking the stuff that's going to work. Acid Well because it's a Fortitude save, so monsters can never resist it fully um, as a great option. You know, stuff like that. Grab the important uh, spells. So it seems not too bad. Um, so thank you for submitting the build. I think that this is a cool character. Uh, Morbius. If you want to try out your own Morbius, this worked on Hardcore League for uh, Axlet, and it's pretty sweet. Yeah, most spells aren't useful. Exactly. Like you're, The only spells, like I said, I can see you casting are like maybe when you're leveling up like Acid Well, because again, there's the, even if the monster makes it save, they take half, and a D, half of a D6 plus 18 is still a D3 plus 9, which is still worth the mana cost of it. So it can be useful, but even still, until you get to 20... Uh, you're not casting spells anyway because you're raging. So, you know, it is, it do be like that sometimes. But, um, yeah, just claw your way to destiny. So, thanks for the submitting that one, dude. It's pretty sweet. I was dancing power words. Yeah, I do like power words stun. Um, I always have, but with melee range on this character, auto's irresistible is probably the only one I would say, yeah, you could throw on there if you wanted because it has no save. But, meh.